Good morning. Thank you for joining us for our signature webinar. If you have any questions during the webinar, please utilize the chat or question and answer function within Zoom. All questions will be answered at the end. This webinar will be recorded and a video will be made available in the next few days. Our presenter today is Greg Hansen, Teledyne ISCO Product Support Specialist. With that, I'll turn it over to Greg. Thank you everybody for coming today. Um, today we're going to talk about the managing your discharge compliance with a signature flow meter. Um, the signature flow meter has, uh, we're gonna go through in this webinar is the many different markets, end users, the applications, a lot of the features and benefits, the different types of items that you can add to it, optional inputs, outputs, the advantages and disadvantages of using a signature flow meter and go through just a little bit of the programming. Now, who are the uh, markets for, or end users for this uh, signature flow meter? We would see that used uh, in industrial discharge or in treatment plants. The signature flow meter is great for customers that are looking to have a centralized data collection system, so a central flow meter to retrieve all the data from all their different um, devices or uh, sensors that may be on there. In AC powered applications, uh, having generic inputs, meaning like four to 20 inputs or SDI 12 inputs, things like that to bring the data in to control different things or even outputs with contact closures. Uh, some single point collection systems, so there's only one point where you go to retrieve your data. Um, say you have multiple channels, you can use a signature meter as well to measure from multiple different channels uh, of different flows to bring into one single collection point. And also the ability to use remote communication and interface and outputs. Now with the applications, we'd be using flow metering or parameters. So flow metering would be using weirs, flumes, pipes, things like that to measure your flow. And then also the parameters, such as maybe uh, a SON to bring in uh, pH or BOD or, or even um, DO or turbidity. Those kind of different parameters can be brought in to the signature flow meter and stored and used for collection. The TINET is our Teledyne ISCO environmental network, which is a kind of what we call a smart sensor. It's built into all the signature flow meters. What it is, is it's our proprietary protocol of talking to each one of the sensors. With a signature meter, you can have up to nine different sensors or devices that can be tied into the signature meter using the TINET bus. The automatic configuration speaks to the fact that you can install the sensors or wire them in and then do a scan to bring the sensors into the signature flow meter and then you're able to program them. Some of the options that you can get are the 310 ultrasonic, 330 bubbler, 350 AV sensor, the 360 laser flow, 301 pH and temperature, 304 contact closure, 306 sample interface, 307 analog input, and the 308 analog output. Now, looking at the different applications where you could put some of these sensors, meaning there's weirs or flumes, meaning you need primary devices to measure the flow through the channels. Now with the 310 ultrasonic, the sensor is mounted above the flow, non-contact, so it's using, the, um, using sound pulses to ultrasonic signals to measure the distance to the surface of the water and therefore calculating the level of the water in the flow. Then by knowing what kind of primary device you have, the level calculates into a flow rate. So great for that kind of situation where you're looking for that you already have maybe a weir or flume or installing a weir or flume and you wanna install something that's non-contact, uh, not in the flow. Now with ultrasonic sensors, you typically don't wanna deal with uh, something that has a lot of um, steam or uh, foam or maybe a lot of wind, which can kind of mess, uh, uh, influence the readings of the ultrasonic sensor. In that case, you would usually look for some other sort of, uh, some more sort of technology to measure the flow. So with the TINET sensor, uh, we would wire it into the signature flow meter with the wires there. It has a one foot dead band, which means you would always want it to be one foot above your deepest flow you ever get. Now the 330 bubbler, 
is great in those applications that we talked about before where there's foam or wind or steam because the bubbler is actually installed in a stainless steel bubble tube or a bubble tube in the flow that measures the depth of the water using the pressure that it pushes back on the bubbles. Now, this is ideal where you've got more of a harsh weather, debris, corrosive uh, chemicals in the flow because you're using, uh, not using a sensor that's actually submerged in the flow. Uh, you're using just the, the bubbles of the air that are pushing out. Again, in this case, you're using the pressure of the water to measure the depth of the water and then using the flow calculations of weirs or flumes or other, uh, other equations you may have for your flow to measure the flow that goes through the area. 330 bubbler is factory installed inside of the signature meter. Um, you can do get a 50 foot bubble line. Um, it's got some purges that are larger purges to help clear the lines out so you don't have plugging as often. And they're done at just uh, settable intervals that you can do in there as well to, to purge out the line to clean it out. The bubbler does use a desiccator on the side. So the desiccant container just that you see on the side here uh, is just to reduce the amount of humidity in the air so it doesn't impact the device uh, components on the inside of the bubbler. One of the options, instead of it needing a primary device, a weir or a flume, um, you can purchase these, what they're called uh, flow metering inserts. A flow metering insert is a way of making a round pipe into a weir. So what it does is it creates a dam-like structure in the flow and you use the bubbler to measure the, the level of the water behind the little the, the, the flow metering insert. Great for round pipe installations instead of having to install a weir or a flume. The 350 area velocity sensor is a, a sensor that's mounted into the flow, uh, typically towards the bottom of the channel or bottom of the pipe that uses the pressure of the water to measure the depth and then fires a ultrasonic signal into the flow and returns an average velocity based off the Doppler shift of the particles in the water. Now the laser flow sensor is, it works on the same kind of principle as the 350, but it's a non-contact and also uses a laser instead of a sound wave in the water. Now what the 360 laser flow does, it uses the ultrasonic sensor mounted on the back of the laser flow to measure the depth of the water and then calculates the velocity, or measures the velocity, I should say, using the laser under the surface of the water. It measures the velocity of the particles in the water and therefore can calculate your flow rate. Other TINET devices, um, we went through a list of those earlier, like the 301 pH, uh, 304 contact closure, 306, 307, and 308, which are sample interfaces or analogs. And those TINET devices are wired in the exact same way or they come in and, and they're little cards that are get installed inside of the signature to perform those functions that you ask for it. Now, in depth, the 301 pH sensor, it looks like this. It's got a little box um, and then you attach your pH probe so you can change the pH probe out over time as, as uh, it's warranted in your application. So the, the 301 measures pH and temperature and logs that information in the signature meter can also be used to trigger alarms and enable sampling, um, uses our existing pH sensor from uh, all of our other meters that we've had, either the 6712 or the old 4200s. So it uses the exact same pH sensor. The 304 contact closure is a way of either alarming or pulsing based off of uh, doing a, what's called a momentary closure based off of a flow pulse. You can create that out of the signature flow meter. Now, the maximum voltage for a contact output is we can do 30 volts or one amp. It does have normally open, normally closed, and common connections. So you can uh, either alarm off of this or use it as a momentary closure for some condition. 306 sampler interface is a way of interfacing with all of our ISCO samplers. So the, it can interface with the 5800s, uh, 4700s, 6712s, GLSs, all those samplers. Uh, it can then use that to pace the sampler, enable the sampler, uh, disable the sampler, or even bring your information of the sampling events back into the signature, which can, which can then be logged. 
Um, you can actually connect multiple 306s, again, up to the nine different Tynet devices on the signature meter. The, so if you have two samplers that need to be paced, one for a municipality and one for your own sampling, just getting two 306 sampler interfaces and setting them up, you're able to paste both samplers and uh, able to do that with, the, with ease. 307 analog input is a way of bringing a 4 to 20 signal in to the 67, or sorry, into the signature meter. So that is used to, we could bring, connect up to say a mag meter or some other 4 to 20 output of a SCADA system and bring that into the signature meter to pace a sampler, store the data, perform functions with a 304 contact closure. We can behave in both a passive or active mode, meaning the sensor, we could have an analog um, pressure sensor that you could connect up that we're actually actively powering, or that it's a powered sensor or powered 4 to 20 signal from a 4 to 20 loop that could be brought into the signature as well. Just a quick switch of a switch on the board allows us to set either active or passive. The output 308 analog output card is used to take a 4 to 20 signal out of the signature into, say, a SCADA system, PLC, or maybe a chart recorder or whatever else you may want to bring the 4 to 20 out of the signature. There are two, uh, each channel, there's two channels on each one of these cards that we've talked about, uh, meaning you could do a 4 to 20 out for level or a 4 to, and a 4 to 20 out for flow or pH or something like that. On each card, you could do two outputs, of, and it doesn't matter which, um, which parameter it is, you can mix and match. Um, so up to three cards can be installed inside of each signature, so that gives you an optional of six external outputs. Uh, easy addition to the field of units, again, you would install the card, scan it, program it, and you're done. So very easy to configure. Some of the optional features of the signature, signature meter is the ability to bring in a rain gauge. Um, we can do the rain gauge, uh, like our 674 rain gauge, which uses a just a uh, read switch closure. So whenever the bucket tips, we would see that as maybe a hundredth of an inch of rain. And we can store that in the signature meter, and we can also use that to create uh, events um, to enable a sampler, something like that, based off of a, a parameter that you've set in the in the flow meter of the signature. The mechanical totalizer is an option that could be either added at the factory or in the field. It is the ability to add a non-resettable totalizer. So it's seven digits, so it just looks like uh, just the odometer that is set in there that measures the flow and puts a incre increments itself by one every 100, say 100 gallons or 100 million gallons or whatever, whatever your setup is on the display. So it'll, it'll kick over one increment every 100. So it's... Uh, Easy to be able to program and install, just plugs into the circuit board so it can be done in the field at a later time if necessary. An Ethernet modem is a way for you to connect the signature meter into your network. Uh, so then you can use the signature meter Ethernet modem to connect with Flowlink uh, via TCP connection. So what you would do is you would um, type in the IP address of the signature meter on your network and be able to connect into it and retrieve the data. If you have a Flowlink Pro database already on your network, you're able to push the data from the signature meter at intervals that you set. And also, send any alarm conditions can also go to the Flowlink Pro server to be sent out via email or text from that server. So it just provides you a way of uh, getting your information out without having to visit the site to download the data. Cellular modems are another way to connect, get you connected to the signature meter remotely. So you could use the LTE CI version, or if you're in a location with GSM, so either the CI is Verizon, or GSM would be AT&T, T-Mobile, or some other um, GSM provider. What you can do then is via a static IP, or having them, you can connect to the device via static IP, download your data, look at the screens, things like that make changes to programming remotely, or use the cellular modem to push the data into a Flowlink Pro server as well and get your alarm conditions sent out via email or text. If you have the um, texting option in your cell phone provider plan, 
you're also able to send text messages directly from the meter to your, your cell phone or other people for alerting them to conditions that occur. The magnetic, flow, uh, magnetic mount uh, antenna is also available, so you can connect that up um, to get, this, uh, get a better signal as well. The battery backup is, uses a 946, one of our 946 lead acid batteries, and it's used to get us about four hours of additional um, uh, battery usage or power usage and let the meter run for that time in a power outage of AC power. So, and then as the power would come back on, it would recharge the battery. So if another event occurred, you'd, you'd know the battery would be charged up without having to pull it out of the field. There is a, a two pin Amphenol connection. So you're just able to wire that directly into the signature and then connect the battery up uh, to that two pin Amphenol on the outside. So it installs fairly easily uh, in the field as necessary. Tynet expansion box is used to reduce the um, amount of cables that maybe have to run a long distance. Uh, what you could do is say you have a signature meter installed at some location in your plant, but you have several sensors further out in the plant. You could install this Tynet expansion box uh, at a central location where all those say maybe three sensors come together and then run one cable back to the signature meter. It allows us to, uh, the, the Tynet um, bus that we use to communicate to our sensors allows us to use just that one cable to go all the way back to the signature, therefore reducing the amount of wires that you have to run the entire distance back to the signature. Uh, also in this TyNet expansion box gives you the ability to add another analog input card or output card or contact closure in addition to the three different TyNet devices that you can run into this. Some of the other signature features, um, the ability to do those multiple inputs, outputs, um, multiple flow rate capable. So one of the things with the signature meter is say you have two flow rates or two, um, uh, we're going to go with two ultrasonic sensors and two separate channels and maybe those two channels converge. Well, what you could do is you could do a flow rate of channel left channel and a flow rate of right channel and then in the signature meter you can create calculated flow rates uh, or conditional flow rates, things like that, but we could actually add together flow rate left and flow rate right to give you a total flow number on your screen. So that gives the ability to create conditional flow rates or combined flow rates in, in, the, in, in the fact that you may have that ability. Local alarming, there's an LED that's on the front that lights up when the unit goes into some alarm conditions that you have set. Also, we use humidity sensors to measure the humidity. Somebody leaves the box open or something cracks or something like that where you get an intrusion of humidity, we'd be able to let you know that through looking at the data or those setting up those as alarms. Diagnostic files, able to troubleshoot via downloading some uh, files, uh, pulling the DDP file, which is the data protocol of pulling the data out of the signature flow meter and putting it into the FlowLink program. The ability to export to CSV kind of opens up the options where if you'd like to retrieve your data via a CSV, uh, what you can do is that is just comma separated values, it's Excel. So a spreadsheet program would be able to open this program. What you would get if you export the data, you would get our header file at the top, which just kind of lists out what each parameter is of each column. And then you see every one of your data points that you told it to retrieve. So this is a way of you being able to download the data without having to use FlowLink if you didn't want to. You could retrieve it with a USB stick. All you do is you walk up to the unit, plug in a, uh, a USB drive to the signature flow meter. The signature flow meter will pop up a screen, allow you to be able to retrieve data uh, via the uh, CSV, or there's the ability to download the data the same way with what we call text reports. And those text reports can be set up as a daily text report to give you min, max, average, total flow rate, or pH, or level, or whatever you want to put in there for a parameter in those reports. And you also can set up a second one for, say, monthly. Um, but those are all settable to whatever parameters you're looking to get. We do have a portable version of the signature as well. The signature um, ships with a stand and a DC power connection already on it, and also a Tynet 
receptacle. The receptacle is used instead of running the wires inside of the signature. The sensors that come for a portable signature come with a connector end on it. So you just plug them in and instead of into a, a receptacle instead of having to uh, wire it directly inside. It also comes with the ability to or the power reduction features, which turns off the screen and turns off the, um, the backlight, which are kind of your power consumers in a normal application so that uh, you're able to get the most battery life out of uh, a battery you have installed on the portable signature. And here's a kind of a picture of what the uh, receptacles would look like going into a portable signature. In the middle there, there's a Tynet receptacle, receptacle I'm sorry, that plugs into the sensors um, and a DC power connection for you to plug a battery in or maybe connect it up to a solar panel, something like that in the field where you can get those portable settings uh, to allow you to save your battery life. Some of the enclosure features, um, NEMA 4X, even with the door open, so the electronics are inside a NEMA 4X. Um, just some of the abilities with a lock, lockable clasp for security, so you're able to lock it um, with a padlock or something like that to prevent intrusion. The user interface, um, there's a large LCD display, a keypad for your navigation. Um, USB port for downloading, so what you can do is you connect up a small little cable with a USB drive attached to it, that the little cable is included in every signature in the door, and then you're able to retrieve the data or text reports, or, and that's also how you would upload um, any firmware changes. So say we have a new firmware change to give you new features, you're able to update your signature in the field using that USB drive. And right there it shows a little picture of the USB drive location. Some of the programming features, just an overview here a little bit. Um, pretty simple startup and installation. You just connect all the devices, perform a scan, and it will find all those new uh, Tynet parameter devices that are on your, on your signature. You're able to program them um, up at that point. You can save your configuration on your program to the USB flash drive as well. Uh, multiple parameter measurements used so including multiple flow inputs for multiple channels or multiple pH sensors. The ability of connecting up to nine different Tynet devices into a signature makes it uh, very useful in those applications where you have, instead of maybe having to install multiple flow meters, you just have to install several sensors into the same signature flow meter. Uh, flow link, connecting via flow link into the device and seeing what you see on the front screen are exactly the same configure, uh, the same programming scheme, I guess, if you look at it that way. What you see on Flowlink matches exactly what you see on the home screen or when you work through with your keypad buttons. Uh, be able to do those two reports, like we said. Uh, most people do an, a daily and a monthly. You're able to set the start times. Say you want to do 8 a.m. or midnight, you can set that as well. Uh, a shortcut button, so there's a shortcut button on there that allows you to go to um, several locations like setting a level, uh, doing adjusting a level, adjusting pH, some of the main things that you would do is under the shortcut button. Password protection is also an option. Um, you can enable it so that somebody would have to have a password or passcode to get into the device um, to make any changes to your program as well. It looks like that's all we have for that, but I, I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have, or it uh, looks like we might have a couple here. So if you do have questions now, please type them into the question and answer portion, and we'll answer as many of them as we can. Uh, otherwise, if we run out of questions, we'll, we'll be done with the webinar for the day. Uh, if you do have other questions, you, you're welcome to put them on the survey or anything that comes about after this call. I'm going to read a couple questions here. Uh, can we connect this flow meter to an auto sampler? Um, yes, you can. Uh, the signature flow meter is able to connect using the 306 sampler interface to any of our ISCO devices, uh, ISCO samplers like 6712, GLS, those kind of things with uh, directly connect to it with a cable, the, our six pin Amphenol or in our 4700 or 5700s, the 16 pin connection. We're able to do that as well. You can define the sample, so or define the pulses. So on the flow meter of the signature, what you would do is you would say um, that I want to send a pulse every thousand gallons or something like that, or two thousand or three thousand, whatever it may be that you want to set. 
what you would do then is then in the, in the, the sampler, you would tell it to take, wait for a certain number of pulses. Um, now, there's another question on here, as in the volume per pulse, uh, but yes, so the, how much volume flows through your flow meter per pulse, that's what you would set. It does not need to be factory set. You can change it up at any point in time. So say you guys, you decide to change based off of your flow conditions of change. You want to change your sampling uh, based off a certain number of gallons. Yes, you can change that in the field, no problem. Um, let's see here. Uh, I've got using our 306 sampler interface. Um, not getting it. Okay, that looks like a troubleshooting one. Uh, 306 sampler, not seeing the pulse. Uh, just reaching into my troubleshooting stuff here. What I would do with the 306 sampler interface is it able to see the 306? We'll maybe do a scan, check that out. Or I would really suggest giving a call to where I normally work is in my uh, product support group. So if you want to give them a call at 800, I'm sorry, 866 298 6174. Again, that's 866 298. 6174. Um, typically, I have several of us in there answering the calls all day long from 7 Central till uh, 5 p.m. Central, and we're happy to answer any troubleshooting calls you got on that. We're, we can do that for you. Um, is there a way to increase brightness? Yes, that one's a, it's just a couple of keys. What you would do is you would press the, uh, if you hold down the plus minus key, and then use the arrows up and the arrows down. That will then allow you to um, set or increase or decrease the contrast and the brightness. Uh, can the PH Pro for a 201 PH module be used instead of the 301 module? Uh, the, the 301 module is required for the signature. It just talks completely different to the signature versus the old 4200. So you would need to get the 301 pH module, but you can use the exact same pH sensor. So the sensor that you have, that four pin connection that goes on the, 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 the 201 module from the sensor that goes down your stream, you could use that exact same sensor with the 301. Maybe misunderstood that, but yes, you could use the same pH probe for both of those. Um, let's see here, connect cable, So if you have the 306 cable, are your, if you just go into scan, now where you kind of do that, I'll just do a little more troubleshooting here. I got a couple more questions, but uh, where you go is under the uh, menu, hardware setup, Tynet smart sensor setup, there's a perform scan. So whatever you add any dev new devices or new sensors or change out sensors, you're able to go into that area. So again, menu, hardware setup, Tynet smart sensor setup, perform scan that will find any new sensors or find any changes that you've changed the sensor out. Maybe you uh, replaced a different sensor that would allow you to change that sensor out quickly just by doing that. Uh, a way to cycle power on the keypad on a permanent signature. Uh, not at this point, just through key presses. Uh, right now there, uh, I know there is um, a new firmware update coming for the signature at some point that does give the ability to re boot the signature or cycle power, tell the signature to reboot itself um, coming in the near future. So hopefully that'll be out. Um, as for a cable to connect the auto sampler to the flow meter, if you have a non-ISCO flow meter, I would re recommend getting a um, contact output card. That way we can do a momentary closure to say a, a non-ISCO sampler. You're able to send that uh, signal to them as well to paste them. That could be done as well using the 304 contact closure card. Um, questions concerning, uh, I, I see a question here on the Verizon, getting a SIM card with a static IP. Uh, what I would do recommend is making sure you have the correct APN. The APN is the access point name. Now with Verizon, that's dependent on the area code of the phone number that they gave you. Now it's getting a little more into the troubleshooting here, but I'm, I'm happy to do that as well if needed. Uh, but if you do have questions concerning the troubleshooting, I really would suggest um, contacting our phone number for our tech support, which is 866-298-6174. All of us in there will be able to help you out. So it looks like we might have maybe one more question here. Let me look.
have several signals that are updated. Um, so the picture meter uh, up on our website. The, the signature on our website for it gets bin file, B-I-N-F-I-L-E, all one word. And what you do is you just drop that dot bin file from our website in there. And when you take it out to the signature and connect it up to the signature with your USB drive, uh, there's an option in those USB options that show um, where you can update signature firmware. As simple as that, and then you just show point to the new firmware version you put on the drive, and it will update. Usually give it about 15 minutes it, just to make sure after it reboots, everything is good to go, and you'll be at the newest firmware at that point. Looks like I don't have any other questions at the moment, but again, uh, I appreciate everyone's time for listening in today. If you do have further questions, just please contact customer or technical support at the phone number that I've been given, and uh, any of us will be able to help you out with those questions. Thank you for attending our signature webinar today, and thank you to Greg Hansen for pre presenting on this topic. It was recorded and a video will be made available. If you have any questions regarding this webinar, please feel free to reach out to me through Zoom and I'll afford, forward it to the appropriate person. Otherwise, you can call um, our product support line that Greg has provided us and um, they will be happy to assist you. Thank you again for joining us and Teledynisco would like to wish you a safe and happy holiday. Thank you.